Hi, I'm Vid Morreale with Boris FX, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Title Studio BCC 10 and Sapphire 10 to create some creepy titles for your Halloween delight. Now the titles you see here were created as part of the Halloween contest trailer, and there's a lot going on. We have some grungy textures and glows, but ultimately the steps to recreate this are pretty basic and offer a lot of opportunity to customize things. To begin with, let's start by creating a new 1920 by 1080 comp. For this project, I have a very cool fleur-de-lis wallpaper texture. Now you can substitute your own or download the original from the link in the tutorial. Now before I begin to layer on any text, I want to do a few things to set up this background. I want to go to my Effects and Presets and select BCC Fast Film Glow. Now at the moment, there's not a whole heck of a lot for that glow to work off of. In fact, I'm going to have to really crank that intensity into the 1100 range just to get something usable. But as we go through the tutorial, you'll see how the individual effects layer to create some really cool looks. Anyway, this is a Halloween-inspired title, so let's set that glow color to an orange-red. Now ideally, what I want to do is really draw the viewer's eye to this central area. So I'm going to increase my glow radius just a bit. About 112 should do it. But I also want to pull back on that threshold so the glow doesn't overwhelm my wallpaper. A threshold of 28 should do that just fine. Once that's done, I want to select BCC Brightness and Contrast for my effects and presets. Make sure that it's placed at the bottom of the stack beneath the film glow, otherwise it will composite incorrectly and significantly reduce the glow that we're going for. The reason this happens is because if it's placed above the glow, any reduction in brightness will reduce the source upon which the glow is based. You can see the difference when I swap them here. Okay, with that done, let's create a new adjustment layer and name it Grunge. To this, we are going to go to the Effects and Presets and type in BCC Grunge. Now, Grunge is a pretty interesting stylized effect that not only allows me to create grungy, degraded, and torn up looks, but I can also add dust, noise, and other textures to my effect. Now, the first thing that happens when I apply the effect is it generates this texture, and I can toggle this effect on and off by selecting the Show Texture checkbox. I can also toggle and tweak the various effects available to me down here. For now though, what I want to do is go to my preset menu and select Soft Grunge. That looks pretty good, but right off the bat there are a few things that I'm going to want to turn off here. So let's go through and disable everything except for the texture. Now one of the reasons that I like this effect is that if we zoom in, you can see that it has applied a crumbling and degraded texture to my wallpaper image. You can see that the texture is cracked and peeling and it really gives a creepy and decaying vibe. Perfect for Halloween. Okay, now it's time to create our titles. I'm going to begin by creating a new solid and naming it Titles. Then I'm going to add BCC Title Studio to this and launch the UI. Now the great thing about this project is that we're going to keep the title design very simple. Our creepy look is going to come from the layered BCC and Sapphire effects. What I want to do is delete the placeholder text and create a new flat text. In my text tab, I'm going to go and change the color to a nice orange. Now the font I used in the original clip was AR Bonnie, but feel free to use whatever font you want. When done, hit apply. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good, but let's tweak this text a bit. I want to give it some wispy edges. To do this, I'm going to go to my effects and presets and type in CC Vector Blur. Drop that right onto my titles layer. Now there are a couple of very cool looks that we can create here. If I leave the type on natural, I can control the width of my text as well as the angles of the distortions. By selecting constant length, my blur will be centered in the middle of the text and create a central core of light that makes neon signs so distinctive. Now whichever way you opt to go is up to you, but keep in mind that it will have a bearing on how the glow effects will appear. In my case, I'm going to set the type to natural and increase the amount a little bit, to roughly around 13. Next, I'm going to offset my angle. By doing so, I can change the direction of the distortions. I'm going to set it to around 30, and that'll allow me to create some faint wispiness on the tops of my letters. While I'm at it, I'll set the ridge smoothness to 21. Now with ridge smoothness, the higher the value, the smoother and better defined the hard edges of the vector blur will be. And the last thing I want to do is reduce my map softness to 6.2. Next, I want to apply a new instance of BCC Fast Film Glow to my text layer. I want to restrict the glow to just my text and keep it very subtle but I definitely want the text itself to be vibrant. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase my glow intensity well past 500. Since these are Halloween titles, let's go ahead and set the glow color to red. Now as I mentioned, I want to keep that glow restricted to my letters, so I'm going to set my glow radius to 11. The threshold setting will further refine the glow, and I'll want to pull it back so the focus is on the lettering rather than the entire image. 
so I'll set my threshold to 35. The lower I reduce it, the more refined of a glow I'll be able to see around my letters. Now you can adjust it as you see fit, but for the look I'm going for, I want to keep my glow fairly tight. Alrighty, with that done, let's create a new adjustment layer and name it Grunge. I want to make sure that it's sitting above my title layer so that any changes we make will affect the entire composition. As before, I'm going to go to my effects and presets and select BCC Grunge. Now you can either type it into the search or select it directly from the BCC Stylized Unit category. I liked how that soft grunge looked before, so I'm going to select it from my preset menu. And since I've already have the texture from my wallpaper, I'm going to go ahead and disable the new texture here. I also want to disable glow since I think we have enough of that already. But let's go ahead and enable flicker. Now with flicker, I have three options for how I want that flicker to behave. I can make things brighter, darker, or a combination of both. By playing around with these, you can get some really nice effects. Me? I'm going to select both, but I don't want it to be too chaotic, so I'm going to reduce the amount to 5. The orbs effect allows me to create round textures similar to bokeh in the image. We can leave that at its default or tweak it to make them more noticeable. The thing that I really want to focus on here, though, is the dust. As its name implies, dust creates dust particles floating around the scene. Since this is a horror movie, I want to create something similar to the ash floating around the frame in the movie and game series Silent Hill. By increasing my count and density, I'm able to increase the number of particles floating on the screen. Now be careful how high you bring these values, as the more random floaty particles you create, the longer it will take to render the effect. But in this case, I'm going to increase the count to 600, and the density to 10. I also want to increase the scale, as this is going to cause some of the particles to increase in size, creating more depth and variation. A setting of 376 should work quite well. Lastly, I want to up the disperse parameter. Higher values of disbursement will create more depth to the scene as the particles will be separated not just along the X and Y axis, but also within Z space. It's important to note that Grunge offers me a number of other options such as noise, scan lines, chromatic aberration, and blurs. Feel free to experiment with them to find the look that works best for you. For now, this works for me, so let's move on. Now we're going to add some more glow effects to the comp, but before I do that, I want to create a new adjustment layer and name it Finishing. Technically, a new adjustment layer isn't strictly necessary as you could add this to the previous adjustment layer, but as a matter of workflow, I prefer to keep my finishing effects on a separate layer from my stylized effects. Now while I said we were going to add a glow to my effect, we're not going to be using my old favorite fast film glow. I want to do something a little bit different, so in my effects and presets, I'm going to type in S underscore glow. S-Glow is available as part of Sapphire 10 and offers some unique features, so let's drag that onto our adjustment layer. Now why Sapphire? Why not BCC Fast Film Glow? Well, if you don't have Sapphire, you can absolutely use Fast Film Glow, but let's take a closer look at S-Glow and see what makes it uniquely suited for this effect. The first thing I notice when I apply the effect is that it has nearly all of the same parameters that are available to me in Fast Film Glow. What I want to do is pull back a bit on that glow, so let's drop the brightness to 1. Next. I'm going to set that color to orange, just as we did before. The glow width parameter is similar to the radius parameter that we saw in Fast Film Glow. And as before, I want to restrict it to just the area around the text, so let's set that to 2. But let's slightly increase the width X. By putting it to 10, I'm going to get a little bit more glow along my X axis. And while I'm at it, let's reduce the width blue to 0.15. This is going to pull back on the glow in the blue channel a bit and give it more of an orangey red look. If I were to reduce my glow under source, I can pull the glow behind the text a bit. So setting it to 0.5 works nicely. And I can also reduce how much of the background the glow is lighting by increasing the light background parameter to 0.3. Alright, so all of this is stuff that we could have done in Fast Film Glow, but what makes S-Glow uniquely suited to this effect are the additional parameters for atmosphere. If I open up this subgroup, I can control the texture of the fog surrounding the glow. The higher the amplitude, the more organic the texture. So I'm going to set that to around 8, but I'm also going to reduce the atmosphere detail a bit. With atmosphere detail, higher values create a sharper effect, so if it's cranked too high, it's going to look over-contrasted. By pushing it down a bit, the texture becomes more mist-like. Lastly, feel free to play with the atmosphere seed and spread. These values control the randomness and movement speed of the textures. Since I prefer more subtle movement, I'm going to keep these values low. When that's done, let's throw on a BCC vignette and adjust that radius a bit so that only the central text area is seen. As a finishing touch, we can add a little camera push. Now there are two very different ways to do this. Most text animations can and should be done within Title Studio. 
But the reason I didn't animate the text push in Title Studio was because I wanted to keep the background and text separate so I could work with the background glow and grunge. Now, if all you want to animate is the text itself, then the fastest way to do that is select the text layer and launch Title Studio. By selecting the scene container, we can access the controls for the camera. With the first frame selected, I can place a linear interpolation on the zoom, and then I can select the last frame and increase the zoom value. When I apply back, the text will zoom in. Additionally, I could also simply animate the zoom by enabling the Use Transformations checkbox and keyframing the position Z. But what if I wanted a camera move on everything, including that grunge-styled wall? Well, the first thing I want to do is remove any animation I've placed in Title Studio. Once that's done, I'm going to toggle the 3D checkbox for all of my layers. Then, I'll go and create a new 3D camera, and I'll animate the zoom on this camera. However you choose to animate your effect, once it's done, sit back, hit render, and that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morelli with Boris Effects, and for more quick tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care!